Hello and welcome to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and in this very special Christmas episode of Crossroads Rebuild, I'm excited to introduce you to the latest rebuild project here on Crossroads Rebuild, my 2004 Mercedes E320. All right, so let's go ahead and take a quick walk around the car. I'll show you the damage as well as kind of give you an idea what my plans are with the car. Before we get started, let me just first apologize for how filthy this thing is. I bought this car from the Copart lot in Cleveland, Ohio. And the day that I went to pick it up, it was right after we'd had some snow and that lot was a filthy, muddy mess. So yes, it is disgusting. It'll need to be cleaned up, um, but that is um, one of the last things we'll do. So quickly, let's walk around. This is a 2004 Mercedes E320. It has about 147,000 miles on it. You can see that right there on the window, 147,000 miles, which for its age is not too bad. Um, I did pull a Carfax on this car before I purchased it, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, but this Carfax did show that this was a two-owner car with no previous accident history other than the accident it was in that totaled it out. So looking along uh, the side of the car, it's nice and straight. Uh, not even a whole lot of parking lot dings. We do have just a couple little dings here on this rear fender, but nothing significant. Um, there's not too bad a rust. This car lived its whole life in Ohio, so it does have a couple little places. I don't know if you can see this, but like a little place right there and another little place right there by the door handle where it's got just a little bit of rust, but nothing significant and nothing that I am likely to fix uh, for the sake of this rebuild. It is, after all, a 2004 and older car. Moving along here to the back side, which is where the damage is, uh, this car was rear-ended. And uh, you can see that some of the brackets and stuff are a little rusty, but um, not a big deal. I'll either replace those or possibly uh, take them off, clean them up, paint them and all that. But uh, the bumper is off. I'll show you the bumper here in a little while. The bumper was damaged. And then as far as underneath, um, we've got some brackets that are a little bit bent, uh, nothing too significant. And then it just barely touched the body right here. It did not puncture, it didn't go through. Um, so I am probably just gonna leave that be. It's not a big deal, but where the crash bar actually connects uh, to the body of the car uh, is in good shape. It did not bend it in any way whatsoever. Uh, the crash bar did get bent, it did its job. Um, and unfortunately, I have that in the back of my truck, which I don't have here today. So I'll insert a picture of that uh, right here for you so you can see what the crash bar looks like. But in any case, it did not do a whole lot of damage back here other than, again, just that little bit of a bend. I may try to push that out a little bit from the inside, but I'm not going to worry about that because you won't be able to see it uh, once it's all covered back up. Let me show you the bumper itself real quick. All right, here's the rear bumper. Set it up so we can see it a little bit better. And you can obviously see uh, where it took an impact here. So uh, the bumper is made up of a couple of different parts. You've got the main structure of the bumper. Then you've got these decorative trims and all of that. Um, so everything that's just scuffed and scraped, uh, that could easily be fixed, cleaned up, and uh, repainted. This side doesn't look bad other than a few little scratches. Most of the trim's in pretty good shape. Uh, it does look like trim got messed up a little bit right here. But uh, again, I think all the trim probably could be salvageable. But uh, here's where the main damage is here as far as uh, what concerns me a little bit. And we'll come around this side. And you can see um, that the bumper is cracked here and down through here along this uh, lip. And uh, so that does make the bumper a little bit on the flimsy side. And uh, obviously it's an older bumper, so it's kind of brittle. And so my plan was just to replace this bumper. However, as I have been looking for a replacement, I have found that these things are kind of hard to come by uh, as far as good used bumpers, um, preferably body color. Um, just hard to find a good used one in any body color. And then if you do manage to find one, uh, man, people are really proud of those things. They want a lot of money, five, six, seven hundred dollars for them sometimes. Uh, you can find them a little bit cheaper, um, but they usually are kind of broken like mine is. And then uh, you combine that with freight shipping and it just makes it ridiculously expensive. Could buy a nice um, aftermarket one 
and paint it up and put it on that way. And I'm sure that would be great, but they're really proud of those too. I have not found an economical way to get one of these bumpers for less than about $600, or certainly uh, there are options much more expensive than that as well. So I am thinking about repairing this bumper, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute, but I am thinking about repairing this bumper, um, spending a few dollars on materials rather than trying to replace it. But if you happen to know of a place where I can get a nice silver bumper, or really any color since I'm gonna have to paint it anyway, uh, if you know of a place where I can get a nice bumper for a reasonable price, uh, drop it in the description, I would love to know about it. All right, continuing our walk around the car, you can see that the trunk lid has been taped down. Uh, they did partially disassemble it. Probably it got sent to a shop after the wreck. So it was partially disassembled in that process. So it's not latching right now, but I'll get that put back together as well. Moving along the right side of the car, uh, nothing significant. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of rust right here in the corner of the door. Again, I'm probably not even gonna worry about that. It's pretty small, and again, it's an older car. Uh, but no major issues with the paint uh, or dings in the bodywork or anything like that. Moving along here to the front, uh, you can see uh, the front end's in pretty good shape. The headlights are cloudy, uh, but I will clean those up and polish them and make them look real nice again. And then other than that, uh, you can see that my Mercedes star is missing. So uh, it just doesn't seem right to have a nice Mercedes E-Class without the star. So of course I will have to replace that. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look under there. All right, 2004 and the hood struts still work. I don't know if they've been replaced, but it's exciting to see hood struts still working even on an older car. All right, under the hood, not a whole lot of anything exciting to see here other than uh, this is a 3.2 liter uh, V6 Mercedes engine. It's a little dirty, but certainly not the worst I've ever seen. Um, no signs of any major catastrophic uh, failures under here. I have run the engine, it's got a dead battery, uh, but I have run the engine to get it off the trailer, uh, which was a whole nother thing in and of itself. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, but um, other than that, the engine sounds really good. It's a little bit dirty, and I am not gonna worry too much about this uh, other than cleaning it up and getting it um, a new battery. All right, no walkthrough would be complete without a quick look inside. Again, dead battery, so I'm not gonna turn it on for you. Uh, but the inside's not bad, it's definitely dirty, it needs to be cleaned up, um, but I've certainly seen worse. Let me go ahead and hop in. All right, so we've got the nice wood dash, we've got the uh, nice screen, circa 2004. I don't believe that's touch screen, got the buttons here on the side. I don't know if this has nav or not. It says it's got a button for it, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out later. But, uh, you know, just a basic, basic interior from 2004, um, instrument cluster, you know, nice and simple, classic looking, dual zone climate control, leather seats, but not heated, which is, I don't know, kind of weird to me, but whatever. Um, we're missing a little button here, but uh, it does have it on the inside. Hey, take a look at this. Look at that. Doesn't have the actual phone, but this car came equipped with uh, some sort of a built-in cell phone from back in the day. And uh, here is that missing piece of wood, so I'll have to figure out a way to get that reattached there. But uh, anyway, so that's center console, nothing interesting there. So I'll just have to get this cleaned up. Uh, but otherwise, um, pretty straightforward. All the power windows and everything work, power locks work, memory seats work. Well, I don't know if the memory function does, but the power function does anyway. Um, so other than cleaning it up, not a whole lot to do in here. Did not blow any airbags in the accident, which is very encouraging uh, because that makes things, of course, all that much more challenging. Uh, here in the back seat, got a few parts from when it was disassembled, uh, but other than that, nothing too interesting going on back there. Besides the damaged bumper, there actually is one more thing wrong with this car, or maybe I should say two more things wrong with this car. If you take a look over here, you see the wheel is turned to the left there, and we come along this direction, and uh-oh, the wheel is turned to the right. Um, actually, both inner tie rods are broken on this car. So uh, as it sits, it's a little bit pigeon-toed. Those front wheels are not connected to the steering system of this car at all. 
uh, which made getting it off the trailer really, really difficult. I'll go ahead and roll a little bit of time lapse here of getting this car off the trailer. Uh, it took us about 40 minutes to get it from the trailer to where it sits right now, and I'll go ahead and show that to you here. Did you see all that? It's insane. So with two broken inner tie rods and no way to steer the car with a steering wheel, it was a real challenge to get the car off the trailer. Uh, obviously they put it onto the trailer with a fork truck there at Copart, uh, but getting it off was interesting. Um, basically had to jack up the front end on both sides, straighten the wheels, back it up a little bit until the wheels decided to kind of go their own direction, stop, jack it up, straighten up the wheels, back up, stop, jack it up, straighten up the wheels, and so on and so forth until we got it to where it sits. Uh, it was a very <laughs> tedious process to say the least. I uh, had Doug here helping me, uh, so that was really good. Uh, really appreciate him. Thank you, Doug, for that. Um, but we did get it off the trailer. So uh, the very first thing I'm gonna do before I work on that back bumper or anything else is go ahead and get uh, the suspension fixed. Now, I haven't had a chance to put it on the lift yet because the camera is still sitting on the lift, um, but I'm hopeful that that is all that's broken. I have no idea how it happened. Um, before I bought it, knowing it had suspension damage, because I did know that, I thought, oh, maybe when it got hit, it got pushed into a curb and it broke one side or the other. Um, but they're both broken. So I talked to somebody else and he thought, hey, maybe maybe nothing happened at all in the accident. Maybe that happened when they picked it up with a fork truck at Copart. Uh, maybe the fork's broken. It is, it is really hard to say how that happened. But uh, in any case, it is broken, so I have to go ahead and fix it. All that being said, you'd think, oh, this is a Mercedes part, it's gonna be crazy expensive. Um, and I would have thought the same thing, but I did a little bit of research and I've actually ordered the parts to fix uh, the tie rods. I actually ordered inner and outer tie rods for this car, uh, as well as the boots and a few other little things. Um, and I'm able to get all of those parts from FCP Euro um, for 170-ish dollars shipped. So, um, really not bad at all and if you know anything about fcp euro i've mentioned them many times before here on this channel and you've probably heard them uh heard of them other places but fcp euro has a lifetime guarantee on everything they sell so i really trust them i buy the part i install it if i have any problems anywhere along the way i simply send it back and get a new one for free so thank you fcp euro for your great return policy uh, and warranty and for having excellent competitive prices uh, on these parts as well. Um, I'm excited to go ahead and get started on that here soon and hopefully get the car drivable. All right, so let's talk about a few other things. I mentioned to you that I pulled a Carfax on this car before I purchased it. And that is kind of what really made it worth it to me to buy this car. It is 2004, it's a Mercedes E320, 4 -matic, by the way, I don't think I mentioned that. Uh, 4 -matic is uh, just Mercedes way of saying uh, all wheel drive. Uh, anyway, pulled the Carfax on this thing and um, I was really encouraged to see that the Carfax said it's only a two owner car and both owners maintained this thing at dealerships its entire life. Uh, the first owner had it for nine or 10 years, second owner had it after that until just a month or so ago and uh, the car has been maintained meticulously at dealerships all of its life. I think it was in Cincinnati for a while then uh, it was in Cleveland here when I bought it. Um, and this car, even up to about a month or so ago, uh, it had an oil change at a Mercedes dealership. And it also had, um, about a year ago, actually just under a year ago, it had all four tires replaced, uh, mounted and balanced with brand new Michelin tires, um, uh, less than 10,000 miles ago, about 9,000 miles ago. So this car, it has been meticulously maintained. I have the service records from uh, the Carfax showing it's been maintained all of its life. It had an oil change less than 1,000 miles ago, about a month ago. 
It has tires that are under a year old, and they're not just cheap tires. They are nice Michelin tires. Uh, so that made this car very enticing uh, and worth putting a few dollars in it to get it back on the road. All right, now as far as fixing that rear end damage with the bumper, um, I was able to find a lot of the parts pretty affordably. I already got a crash bar. It's already here. I got that online. Uh, I got a used one that's in great shape and I got that for under a hundred dollars and then I got um, a plastic bracket that broke I already got that again I got that for about 50 60 bucks uh, so no big deal it's just that bumper that's really really um, causing me some trouble so here's what I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix this bumper myself now to do that I will probably have to use fiberglass on the inside uh, to repair especially along that uh, that top part there and uh, fix the cracks and um, then on the outside, I'll need to also um, polish it up real well. Um, I'll need to sand down the, the uh, cracks and scuffs and scrapes and scratches, uh, put some body filler in there and get the exterior of the bumper nice and smooth and clean. And then I'll have to paint it. Now I could either have my buddy paint it who has, um, has his own shop, you know, he's done work for me before, or I could, try to paint this thing myself uh, get some tools get some supplies and give it a shot so tell me what you think in the comments below should i go ahead and buy a bumper and have it professionally painted and mount it and have it look really really nice or should i go ahead and get the supplies to fix the cracks and scrapes myself and then try to go ahead and paint it myself actually i'll go ahead and put a poll above here go ahead and click on the poll above yes or no should i fix the bumper or replace the bumper that wasn't a yes or no question. So, should I fix it or should I replace it? Go ahead and vote above. All right, guys, thank you for sticking with me to the very end and thank you for watching this next episode. I hope you're as excited about this next rebuild project as I am. We've got some minimal damages to fix, the suspension, the bumper, and all that. We've got some cleanup to do. I'm gonna clean those headlights, polish them up, make them look good again. Clean up the wheels, make them look good, make the interior look really nice. Do a real nice detail on the whole thing inside and out, and then get this car uh, back on the road. If you're as excited about it as I am, go ahead and drop a like on this video, and then stay tuned for future episodes coming soon about getting this Mercedes repaired and back on the road. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. If you're not already subscribed, why don't you go ahead and take care of that now click the bell so you can be notified each time i upload a new episode go ahead and also follow me on social media at instagram twitter and facebook where i post photos and videos of things that i'm working on uh, before they go on to youtube and if you're watching this video anytime close to when i upload it merry christmas i hope you have a great safe and fun holiday season with your friends and your family stay tuned for future episodes coming back we'll see you in the next video